Welcome. I'd like to talk about basic fundamentals of oil painting equipment today. So I'm going to be talking about oil paints, um, the mediums, thinners and the palettes that you may like to use. So I teach oil painting and a lot of my students are confused about the sort of paints that they really should be buying. And a common question is, can I buy student quality or do I need to spend the money to buy artist quality? And the answer is buy artist quality. So Windsor and Newton have got their professional artist quality like this. And they also have their Winton, which is their student quality in the nice big tubes. And there is, there's a big difference between them. The professional artist quality is just brilliant. It is brilliant in color. It is brighter, it is more intense. This paint here seems to be a lot thinner. And especially when you've got a cad yellow light. So the cad orange, student quality, professional quality. If you're going to be doing a painting of oranges, then the student quality is not going to cut it. You're going to need to have some professional colors to get that hit of that great, brilliant orange. So if you have, or if you have been gifted some of these particular paints, then don't go and throw these out. Just when you get through them, when you replace them, replace them with the artist quality paints. Here. Now, when you're first starting out, so either Windsor and Newton and the Gamblin are really great products to buy. These are available pretty much everywhere. And if you live um, closer to one of the bigger art stores, you're probably aware that there are just so many different qualities of oil paints which are actually on the market. These two brands are really good ones to start off with and they are really consistent in their quality. Now, being an Australian, I like to buy the Australian products, which is Art Spectrum. And these are available in lots of different sizes from small, medium. And also you can get them way up to having them in cans. So this one here is the Art Spectrum. The other Australian product that I like to buy is the Langridge, which is made in Melbourne. A painter, an artist turned paint maker. And they make a huge variety of um, solvents, mediums, and also these beautiful sort of language paints. And these are just packed with color and packed with pigments. I recommend that you start out where you would like to finish. And you don't need a huge range of oil paints to start with. And I will go through a, a, a good palette, a nice sort of a simple palette that has lots of mixing options a little bit later. So when you're just starting out, paint on a small canvas because you're going to learn as much from this small size as what you do from a big size. One of my favorite palettes, Cad Yellow Light for highlights, Cadmium Orange because it is just so beautiful, Permanent Crimson, Alizarin Crimson, which is a transparent magenta, Ultramarine Blue, also transparent, Shadows, Cerulean Blue, Warm for Shadows. This one here is a cool blue for the sky, for the ocean, Thallo Green. Thallo Green, mix it with Alizarin. And you can get a pretty good, almost black. And if you'd like to make um, burnt sienna, so you've got a bit of crimson here like that, a bit of green and some of your cad orange. And some burnt sienna. On the paint label, there are a few descriptions of what is in the actual paint. And it usually talks about sunflower oil or linseed oil as being the binder. And it will talk about the different pigments which are also included in that color. 
as well, there are two other areas of interest to the oil painter. And one of them is light fastness, or they often call it permanency. And they go through four different stages of it. They call it extremely permanent, permanent, moderately durable or fugitive. And alizarin crimson, I have heard it being referred to as being fugitive. So it's important to be aware that a paint which is not light fast, it means that it is going to fade. So you have to be mindful that if you're going to spend a lot of time on your idea making a painting, then it may fade and it may change it. And this is probably not a really a great idea if you're actually thinking about selling your paintings. So be aware that this light fastness is actually on the back of the tube. Now there is also an opacity or a transparency rating on the back of the tube. Transparency refers to how you can see through a paint or how transparent it is. And that brings to mind watercolours. And watercolour paint is a very transparent medium. You mix up the, 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 the hard little palette and you mix it up with water and you spread it on. The more water that you use, the more transparent it becomes. If you put something down like a yellow, put a blue over the top of it, it'll make green because the colours are transparent. Acrylic paint is not transparent, it's very opaque and especially something like the white. So if you get a great big blob of white and if you put it on a canvas and spread it over the painting, you can't see through the white to see what's underneath it. So therefore we talk about that as being very, as being very opaque. Now oil paint, it comes in different transparencies. A lot of the earth colours, the burnt umber, raw umber, oxides, and often they're called transparent red oxide. They are trans, uh, they're very transparent, as well as alizarin crimson, permanent crimson, thalo green, ultramarine blue. And you can find out this information on the back of this tube to see whether or not they are transparent or they are opaque. Solvents. We're going to be talking about some solvents. Now there's a lot of solvents on the market and they are called odourless. We want to have odourless because if you are sniffing and huffing in all of these fumes you're going to get artist's block and most probably a big headache. So there are a few on the market that will say odourless but you've got to really have a closer look. This one here says odourless but on the side it says poison. And while you may not be able to smell it, you are still breathing in the fumes. Some better alternatives are Gamsol, which is by Gamblum, which is used in um, so, many of the, so many art schools. And there is also another one, which is Language 75, which is by the Language Company. And I'll just read on, I'll just read to you what it says on the label. It talks about this being the lowest toxicity art solvent available, recommended for a safer studio environment. This one, you can transport it by air, by boat, by car, and it does not have a poison label. So with your solvents, I keep mine in one of these jars like this or these little containers and if you take off these clips you can see that it's sealed really well with this black piece around here and on the inside it has an insert with this a strainer with these little holes cut in it and you swish your brush swish your brush around and what will happen is that the heavy particles of the oil paint will drop to the bottom. Now you may have to get in contact with your local council to work out how that you are going to dispose 
of the oil paint or the particles which have dropped to the bottom here. Okay, so that is solvents. So just treat them with a bit of care. So mediums now. Um, oil paints are made on the base of safflower oil and often linseed oil. So the linseed oil can be a medium. And what the medium will do is it will actually thin out the paint. And so it'll make it actually more transparent and it will speed up the drying time. So if you like, you can just use uh, linseed oil. And there are another two which are on the market which are very similar. And one of them is Liquin, which is by Winsor & Newton. This one here, but this one here is a petroleum based product. So you need to be careful with how much you sniff of this one here. And the other one is Galcoid, which is also, which is the Gamblin product. So if you're just starting out, just choose one of these. That'll be enough. There are many mediums on the market to make your paint thicker, to make it matte, to make it shinier, to make it flow. And there are, you know, and often they'll have on them like number one, use as lean, number two in the middle of your painting, number three a bit towards the end, and number four is like a finishing um, medium. And this one here is by Langridge, which is the low toxic paint medium. So you might like to just stick to linseed oil and, um, and, and, and as you progress and as you decide that you want a particular effect, then you may investigate mediums a little further. Palettes. Now remember that um, I suggest that being a beginner that you work on small scale. So I'm assuming that you're going to be working at a tabletop and you will probably end up with a tabletop easel, which I'll talk about in another video. So one of the easiest palettes or throwaway palettes is just a piece of baking paper or freezer paper. And you can actually buy pads of these in art shops so that you can actually work on them and you can throw them away. I often work on these glass palettes or toughened glass palettes. And this one here is from the inside of a refrigerator. And I found this one on the street. And it also had a lot of smaller pieces, which I gave to some of my students. Breadboards, glass breadboards also work really well. Now, if you have one of these transparent palettes like this, you can either paint the back gray, or you can just use the back of an old sketchbook you can put it like that together, just like that. And that will give you a mid-tone to, to mix up your paints on. These are quite easy to clean. You can clean them off with a paint scraper. And I'll show you that clean up in another video. Or another set of a palette that you can buy is this grey plastic that you can actually buy at the art shop. And you can scrape off the paint from these also. And you can also buy some beautiful boxes that you can fold on over themselves like this. Now, a lot of oil paint will last for a day, maybe overnight. Some of the transparent colors will start to dry off. But if you add a drop or two of clove oil that you can buy from a health food store to the actual paint, then often it will be good for about a week, maybe two weeks. Or you can do what I do. I put my palette with my paintbrushes into the freezer and so I freeze them. So if I am on a roll and I'm painting for a few days, then I don't clean off my palette completely. I will just store it in the freezer. So if you would like to learn a little bit more or find out a little bit more about how to be, how to how to um, negotiate your way through this oil painting, then I'll be posting more videos soon. Bye for now.